Hi all, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. My name is Nitin Kaplas. Let's talk about today's problem. Our problem name is Gray to Binary Equivalent. Let's read the question first. In the question, we are given an integer n in gray code, and we have to find the binary equivalent of the number n. We have to return its decimal value of the binary equivalent. Right here, we are given a table. Where we have the decimal value as well as binary and its equivalent, we have given the gray code of it, right? And if I see the example one, n equals to four, right? And we have to return its binary representation of it, which is seven. So just see what's the binary of four. Here we have one zero zero, right? Let's search one zero zero in the gray code, and we have at the end of it we have one zero zero. So what's the equivalent of 100 in binary? We have 111, so we have to return a decimal which is seven, right? I hope you understand the question now. Let's do how we can solve this. So here we have simple steps to solve this question, right? Using this step, we can easily convert gray code into a binary code, right? So let's read the steps. Our first step said record the MSB as it is. What is MSB here? MSB means most significant bit, right? Later you understand what's the most significant. Now add most significant to the next bit of the gray code. Record the sum and neglect the carry, right? After that we have to repeat the process, right? Let's do the dry run of some example. Let's take n equals to four here and Here we have one zero zero, right? In the example, we see output is seven, and its binary is one one one, right? Let's convert it. So first step is record the MSB. Here my MSB is this most significant bit, right? And least significant bit is this LSB, right? Now first step is record the MSB. So let's write this as it is, right? So first step is over. Now Add MSB to the next bit of gray code. Let me add here. If I do the addition of this to one and zero, right? What's the sum here? Sum is one, right? Let me write here. Any carry you have? No, I don't have carry. So if any carry will be there, we have to neglect it, right? So now again we have to repeat the process. So one plus zero, one. Let me write here one. So this is my output, right? We have to return this case, right? Simple. Let's take a dry run of when n equals to five. Okay, when n equal to five, its representation is one zero one, right? Let's see in the decimal form. When I have one zero one, its output is one one zero, which is six. Let's check how we can solve this. I need output six, which is one one zero. Okay. So first step is as it is, we have to fix this. Okay. Now we have to add these two values, one plus zero, which is one. Let me write here one. Again, one plus one, which is zero, and have carry one, and write here zero carry one, which we have to neglected, right? So this is my final answer, which is one one zero. This is my output, right? Output is six in this case, right? So if you clearly see what what we are doing in the second step, simply we are doing if we have one plus one, it's zero. If we have zero plus zero, its sum is zero. If we have one plus zero, its sum is one. If we have zero plus one, its one. If you see what is this operation, it's a ZOR operation, right? So the step here is we fix the this step, right? And we go into the right side one by one and do the ZOR of our previous value, right? Just do this thing. Let's do the code of it. So first of all, we have to fix our most significant bit. Let me write here res result equals to n, right? And what is my stopping case? My stopping case is when n equal to zero or n is negative, right? So let me write here n should be greater than zero, right? Now my first step is over, right? I have to first shift to the right side. Let's shift right side. Okay, now we have to do the ZOR of our previous result to update my result, which is result equal to risk ZOR with n, right? After that, 
we are computed all the values right all the bits and at the end we have to return our result right let's check it's working fine or not let's submit it yeah as you see all the cases are passed right so we are doing the three simple steps so what's the time complexity of it so if you see we are just go into the right side of it right n so we are just dividing right n equal to n by 2 n by 2 n by 2 so how many iteration n will take so it's log 2 raised to power n right its iteration is log base 2 n right so what's the time complexity of it so time complexity is clearly we have big of log n right hope you understand the solution and intuition thank you so much